Hello, military and aerospace enthusiasts. Welcome to our channel, Deep Dive Defense. Over here we take a deep look from unusual angles, which may challenge your mind. So let's dive right in. Today's topic is the FATA-1 medium-range hypersonic ballistic missile. Unveiled in mid-2023, it is claimed to have entered service with the IRGC Aerospace Force earlier, likely since the late 2010s. The development of this missile was driven by advancements made by the Defense Ministry's Aerospace Industry Organization, with projects like the FATE-110, Zolfagar, and Desful. Key personnel from these projects later joined the IRGC Aerospace Force's Self-Sufficiency Jihad Organization, an elite institution focused on developing more exotic high-end missile systems for specialized purposes. This design team, stemming from the legacy of late General Tehrani Mogadam, created the Zohair and Kbar Shikan aeroballistics missiles, which were necessary stepping stones for developing hypersonic missiles. As Iran's missile technology evolved, so did its test infrastructure, including the construction of hypersonic wind tunnels. These facilities allowed Iranian scientists to better understand the atmospheric conditions, as well as the thermal and mechanical stresses that hypersonic glide vehicles endure at speeds above Mach 5, often reaching well above Mach 10 for medium-range applications. Hypersonic weapons, unlike traditional ballistic missiles, fly on a depressed trajectory, maintaining engagement with the atmosphere for most of the flight, which also reduces the risk of early detection by ballistic missile early warning radars. They also possess a significant cross-range capability, allowing them to alter their flight paths laterally, thereby creating uncertainty about their direction and intended target. The FATA-1 was designed as a cost-effective hypersonic ballistic missile, given its conventional warhead payload and the necessity for a higher production quantity compared to hypersonic weapons for nuclear delivery. Its range is limited to 1,400 kilometers, similar to the Chinese DF-17 hypersonic missile. This limitation helps manage the extreme thermal conditions that the missile would otherwise face at longer ranges, which would require more expensive solutions to overcome. The FATA-1 also lacks a vast cross-range capability, meaning it exits the atmosphere for a relatively short period, where it can't change its direction and trajectory to a high magnitude continuously. However, it compensates with a unique feature, a solid propellant sustainer motor with a high-end thrust vectoring control system, known as Flex Seal Nozzle. This propulsion system enables the missile to perform evasive maneuvers during its later portion of exoatmospheric flight, allowing it to counter advanced missile defense systems. As the missile descends back into the atmosphere, the propulsion system helps compensate for the speed loss due to drag, potentially maintaining a high terminal velocity above Mach 5 upon impact. This design bypasses the need for more advanced and costly technologies, such as scramjet propulsion, which are projected to be used in more sophisticated future hypersonic missiles. Instead, the FATA-1 relies on its advanced solid propellant booster, similar to those used in the IRGC Aerospace Force's space launch vehicles, such as the Cosset and Quayem. The vast development effort for a carbon fiber casing circular kickstage with electromechanically steered flex seal thrust vectoring made for space launch vehicles, hence was efficiently utilized for enabling a propelled hypersonic glide vehicle. A critical technological breakthrough for the FATA-1 was the development of a low-drag small-diameter nose tip capable of surviving hypersonic conditions until impact. Creating this component required significant advancements in 3D carbon-carbon composite material production, a technology Iran had mastered by the mid-2000s in its less sophisticated forms. Hence, it took about 15 years to improve Iran's carbon-carbon composite technology to sufficiently mature, to enable a nose tip like that of the FATA-1. While the re-entry speed for the FATA-1 is lower than that of ICBM re-entry vehicles, the prolonged flight duration necessitates a nose tip of comparable durability and quality. The primary booster stage of the FATA-1, derived from the Kbar Shekin missile, propels the missile on a depressed trajectory before separating. During the later phase of exo-atmospheric flight, the sustainer propulsion system activates, enabling evasive maneuvers in the vacuum of space via its flex seal thrust vectoring. As the missile later re-engages with the atmosphere, its aerodynamic fins provide additional steering, while the propulsion system counters drag to maintain speed. The key missile defense defeat mechanism for the FATA-1 can be described as energy defeat. The faster FATA-1 glide vehicle, powered by its motor, 
descends from the thinner air layers while executing random evasive maneuvers. In contrast to that, the interceptor ascends through denser air layers and must constantly steer to react to these evasive maneuvers, thereby bleeding its energy to remain on the interception trajectory. The objective of pseudo-random evasive maneuvering by weapons like the FATA-1 is to slow down the incoming interceptors sufficiently to render interception infeasible. There is no need for a sensor to detect the incoming interceptor and initiate a high-G evasive maneuver to dodge it. The capability of the interceptor to defeat the hypersonic glide vehicle is indicated by the speed at which both meet each other. If the energy state of the interceptor has been sufficiently degraded, it can no longer react to random maneuvers and still hit the target. A situation that worsens for the interceptor if it employs a hit-to-kill vehicle, which requires a direct hit. The FATA-1's role in the IRGC missile force structure is to strike highly protected targets, such as large static missile defense radars, which represent high-value assets. Despite its specialized role and its two-stage layout, the FATA-1 was designed to be a relatively low-cost weapon. This is evident from its conic glide vehicle, which is simpler to produce than more advanced wedge-shaped hypersonic glide vehicles seen in the FATA-2 or the Chinese DF-17. The compensation for the lower lift-to-drag ratio of the conic design was to integrate the solid propellant propulsion system into the glide vehicle and hence add the range which would otherwise be added by the longer unpowered glide phase of wedge-shaped glide vehicles. Additional to that, limiting the missile's range to 1,400 km allows it to utilize the booster from the K-Bar Shekhan missile, maintaining a compact and easily concealable design suitable for civilian-looking launch trucks, some of which feature dual launch rails. Advancements in steel alloys and production techniques allowed the K-Bar Shekin booster to have a very high performance at a very low cost. In fact, more efficient than the carbon fiber-based boosters of its predecessor, the Zohair. The steel casing design also means that the addition of a thermal protection coat can be omitted, which would otherwise be required for a missile flying on a depressed trajectory. Hence the selection of this booster for the FATA-1 creates what's likely is the world's lowest cost hypersonic weapon. The solid propellant missile can be launched quickly in response to targets detected by space-based or airborne ISR assets. It is a weapon with an exceptionally low time of arrival, requiring a mere six and a half minutes from launch until impact 1,400 kilometers away. This rapid response capability, combined with its ability to evade missile defenses and maintain high terminal velocity, makes the FATA-1 an effective tool for striking adversary missile defense systems throughout the region especially the early warning and guidance radars, which are often stationary or have very limited and time-consuming mobile redeployment capability to evade being targeted. The design of the FATA-1 reflects a balance between cost, capability, and survivability, ensuring it remains a key component of Iran's missile arsenal for the very first phases of a conflict against a highly capable adversary. So that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video and like our work, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. We will try our best to answer your comments. Your support would be greatly appreciated and motivates to produce more content in the future. Thank you, and have a great day.